Well, hi, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, then a big welcome, and I hope you find it interesting. So um, today, I'm gonna to be reviewing a new telescope that I've got on loan from Altair Astro. So um, let's get into the video. Okay, so here we have a nice little telescope that Altair Astro has kindly loaned me. And that scope is it's the Starwave Ascent 70 ED. Now the case it came in is very sturdy. It's not a hard case, but it's not soft and it's got this very dense foam pattern in it and it's really gonna protect the gear inside that case. So that's how it comes. Uh, it's pretty good. Now this scope here is I don't want to say budget scope because it's not a budget scope, but the price you would think that it might be because it's only £379. So at that price, I'm quite impressed for the build quality because it certainly doesn't feel or look like a cheap scope. It's an all metal body. It has an aluminium dew shield, which is quite stiff to pull out. And it's got an aluminium lens cap. All metal parts, very nice. And you're not gonna have the problem when you're pointing upwards with the dew shield wanting to fall back. It's very firm, so that's good. Now, the finish is lovely. It's got a very nice paint job on it. This has also got an upgraded dual focuser rack and pinion. And there's a tension control knob here, but even with that loose, it's still a very nice, smooth action. It's an all metal geared focuser, and with this one in 10 fine focus control knob here, very smooth. And it doesn't feel like there's any play at all. It just doesn't feel like there's any backlash whatsoever on that. It's good quality. I think this has been upgraded for 2024. You can also fit an electronic focus to this as well. When the focus tube is right in and the dew shield is retracted, the overall size of this is just under 30 centimeters, which is very small, very handy for traveling. If you wanted to put it in your carry-on bag, um, it's only about two kg but yeah, it still feels heavy enough to feel like a, a, a good quality scope. Now the glass on this, believe it or not, is an FPL 53, fully multi-coated glass, and that's gonna really help with your color correction. It's a 70 mil aperture at 420 mil focal length. And with the reducer, it's a 0.8 reducer on here or a flatter reducer it'll take it down to about 336 and that's at f4.8 currently it's at uh, it's 90 focal length it's f6 but all in all that's a very nicely built small wide field refractor telescope i think it's very good quality and good value for money right so here this is set up for visual, so if you undo these, take that out, and then undo this uh, ring here, and they supply you with a adapter. And this is an M54, male to female, and that goes, screws in there. And then this flatter reducer, M54, will screw into the adapter ring. And then you can attach your camera and, uh, or filter wheel or filter draw on the end here, which is it's an M48. It'll just screw onto there. So you can then adapt this for astrophotography. 
yeah, uh, all in all, I'm quite impressed with this. So, I mean, it looks good on paper. It looks good in the hand. So let's see what it can do out in the field. So I'm going to attach a 533 one shot color camera to this and uh, we'll see what the stars look like. Right then, so let's get the camera on. So with the reducer flattener fitted, I've taken off the uh, visual adapter. We'll unscrew this cap and we've got a 48 mil thread. So we've got to get 55 mil back focus, which includes the 17.5 mil in the camera to the sensor. So that's 17.5 from the edge of the camera body into the sensor. So got some spaces here. This is 15.5 and that's an M48, which will screw straight on there. And this is a five mil adapter. Again, that will screw straight on. And I've got a Altair two inch filter drawer here, which is very nice. I've not seen one of these before. It's very well made. Yeah, magnetic. Fits nice and snugly. It's very nice. That will screw straight on here. And that's 17 mil. And then the camera will screw straight on to the filter drawer. So it's always best to get the filter drawer as close to the camera as possible. And just get that started. Here we go, that's on. Right, so now if we do the maths and add it all up, it should be 55 mil. So we've got 17.5 and 17. Uh, 5, 15.5, that adds up to 55 mil. So that is the image and train. And uh, all I've got to do now is attach this to a Lozmandy plate and fit it on the mount. I think I'm probably going to put it on the HEQ5. Uh, I'm not going to fit a focuser yet. I'm going to have to use a good old fashioned batten off mask for the focusing. But that's just so we can test the optics and also have a quick look at this camera. I'm going to have to do a review on the camera in depth at a later date. For now, I'm just going to see what this scope is like and uh, we'll look further into this camera uh, a little bit later. Right, so let's get it on the mount. So as you can see, I've had to temporarily set the rig up so I can get it all connected. Um, this is a new Mealy Quad 3, which I've had to download all the software on it to get it all to work. And that's another Pegasus Power Box that I've acquired. So I've had to connect it all together, download all the software, and basically test it with this rig here just to make sure that it's all working. So now I've got it all connected. Um, I just gotta wait for some clear skies. And hopefully we can uh, test out the scope and the camera and um, hopefully get some images with it. So fingers crossed for some clear skies. So I've got a batten off mask on here ready. This is an adjustable one. You can just move these little sliders up and down so that 
will fit inside the telescope. I think this goes from about 70 to about 100 mil. That'll sit on there nicely and uh, that will be my focus and aid for tonight. Right, so managed to get set up. It might be a little bit too windy for this, but uh, I have got an opportunity here. I've got a window of about two hours. So it's a bit of a crude connection, I'm afraid. Uh, there's wires everywhere. It's not, <laughs> it's not very neat and tidy. So I'm literally just testing this out. Just want to see if I can get an image with it. I've decided to go for M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. Right, so let's log into Nina and I'll get that all set in. enough mask on and I'm taking an image oh here we go that's not fire out on the focus and actually if you look at that I'm gonna make a slight adjustment and uh, let's see what happens um, I'm gonna go that way whichever way I go it's gonna be the wrong way let's just try that again yeah that was the wrong way we go back the other way I miss an electronic focuser. Once you've had one, you never want to go back. Oh, I'm going to give it one more little tweak. That's pretty good. I'm going to say that's focused. So let's go back to um, my sequence and let's hit start. Right, so any minute we're going to be seeing my first sub, five minute sub of M101. So let's go into imaging and we'll wait to see what comes up. So here we go. Right, looks like we've got a dust spot on there. I need to do some flats, but there's M101. It's looking good. Okay, so I've brought the um, image into Pixel site here. I'm going to split the channels and work on them individually. So as you can see, I'm zooming in right into the corners here to look at the stars and they look perfectly round, very nice. I haven't even cropped the image yet. That uh, flattener reducer has done an excellent job. I've still got to do a dynamic crop and then I'm gonna work on the individual channels and then combine them and uh, I will create the image. So I um, just want to show you the stars and they look pretty good. But, uh, I'm gonna get on with the rest of the image. So before I show you the image that I've taken with this scope, I'll just go over the main points. It's uh, nicely built, the focus and was very easy. I found it easy to work with. I don't have an electronic focuser fitted, so focusing with this fine tune uh, adjustment knob here was really easy. There's some little attachment screws here. On this side, you can see I've fitted a um, bracket for a guide scope, and you can put another little bracket on here if you wanted to attach something else yeah, like the ASI Air or a, a mini PC or something. So um, it would probably balance quite well, actually. If you put another bracket on here, it would <laughs> nicely even out the balance um, with this guide scope to one side. But I mean, it's such a small scope, I don't think you're going to have a problem with balancing anyway. I got it balanced nicely on my HEQ5. All metal parts. Uh, ideal travel scope when the uh, deuce shield is retracted and a focuser is right in, it's less than 30 centimeters and weighs around 2 kg. The uh, flattener reducer, um, it really did give a nice even flat field. Um, the stars come out really well. 
So if you managed to get this far in the video, a big thanks and uh, I hope somebody found it useful. So if you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this kind of thing and you want to see more, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. Tick the little bell so you don't miss any future uploads. I'm going to be doing a review on the 533 soon. It just leaves me now to show you the image that I've taken with it and you can make up your own mind. Uh, leave me any comments below if you like and any questions I'll do my best to answer them. So a uh, big thanks to Altair Astro for loaning me the scope and the camera. Obviously if you want more info on this you can contact Altair directly. I uh, hope you like the video and I hope you like the image and thanks for watching. Uh, as always uh, I wish you all clear skies.